here because as I started walking, you know, and I had wife and kids, and you get caught up trying to support your family and, and all that, and I let and I let my walk with him become a burden. I let it become a religion. You know, then everybody comes in to try to instruct you. You know, and every denomination's got their own little box they want to put you in. And they say, hey, this is what you need to do if you want to have a walk with God. And this is how it's going to look. And you know what they do? They take their roll and they unroll this thing. And there it is, this long list. And they're saying, this is what you got to do to be holy. Right? This is what you got to do to be holy. And how many of us look at that list and go, woohoo! Sorry, <laughs> it's a little loud on the mic. It wake if you know if you're falling asleep, we'll wake you up. We we don't do that, do we? Because is it about a list? Was it the list that drew you to him? So we start in the spirit. You know, like even Paul said, you know, are you so foolish, you Galatians, that you began in the spirit and now are you made perfect by the flesh? See? And, and there's a lot of ways we can be made perfect by the flesh. What were they doing in Galatia? They were, they were following rules, and they, they made the walk with God boxed up into keep the law. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of people saying, you know, and, and Yeshua did say, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But there's a lot of people that are going on, they're really excited about the law. They're really excited about the list. There, and, and just something inside me going, there's something wrong with that. Is it the list or is it him? That's, you start, what you end up start doing is you start going from an intimate, loving, rela- it's kind of bright up here, loving relationship with him where we have that walk, and it's so precious, it's so pure. You know what I'm talking about. If you've ever known him, if you've ever tasted and seen that he is good, and how many of us have gone to that place where we're in that place, and we're just loving him. And you know what? When you love him, you're, you're keeping the list, but you're not, that's, not your, that's not what you're worshiping. That's not what you're focusing on. That's natural. You can't help but do the list when you're in love with him. Right. And so we start focusing on the list and we our lives start getting dry. We start focusing on head knowledge. You know, one of the things it says about Satan, he says, you become twisted by your wisdom and your knowledge. It's twisted you. You know, we can go when we're not keeping relationship in parallel with the knowledge that we're getting, the knowledge is going to twist us and it's going to start to dry us up because we're no longer focusing on that thing that he meant for us to have, which is a life in him that is so amazing, so transforming that it can, it's, it's so awesome. And so I found myself doing a roller coaster ride in my Christian walk. Man, I felt called to the ministry when I was 17 years old. I felt the calling to preach. But, uh, you know, really, that, that didn't happen. What happened is my fire started getting put out, and I started getting caught up into works. And for some reason, I just couldn't maintain that love that I used to have. And, you know, we're trying to figure out why, and I seem to be doing all the right things according to the box. But I lost something beautiful. And so I want to talk to us tonight about breaking our boxes, taking that. You know, we were, we were over in San Diego here about a week and a half ago and uh, really had an amazing time. The Father, sometimes he sent, I love being in a spirit-filled church where the Holy Spirit is moving with, because that's my background. I was saved in a Pentecostal church, and I love the Holy Spirit. I love the, we go sometimes to places where they don't even believe in that. So then... You know, we always preach the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, we, we, we go into a lot of places, we know, a lot of just regular spirit-filled, and then we go into some places that are kind of like Hebrew roots. And, you know, we go, we go into places where the, it's Hebrew roots, and you know what we do? We preach Second Corinthians chapter 3, the ministry of the Spirit over the ministry of the letter. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know what we're seeing is we're seeing people that, 
Or like, you know, well, I felt like something was wrong way back in my walk, and I start getting more truth, and they get really focused on that truth. And that truth becomes so important to them that they're leaving off the real knowledge, which is knowing him, right? And that Paul said, I've suffered the loss of all things that I just might know him, that I just might know him. That's all I want is I just want to know him. I just want to love him. I just want to walk with him. Don't just give me a list. Give me a relationship because if all you got is to offer is a list, well, I'm going back into the world. But if I can live with him and if I can walk with him, if he can be in my heart and have, I can have have his presence, then that's what I, and then nothing else compares to that. And I don't even know where I got stuck. I don't even know where I got lost, but somehow I got lost in religion and it was the, you know, if we will, the right religion, or we always think the one we're in is right, right? You can be in the right, doing the right thing and be so dead. You could be so dead. You know, I, uh, you know, we, we see a lot of people who, you know, they're doing the, they're really focused on being observant, really focused on keeping the commandments. And I, I like to remind people, well, hey, you know what? Back in Yeshua's day in the first century, these people, they were, um, they were keeping the Sabbath. They were keeping the feast. And those are great things because we keep the feast. We keep the Sabbath. We believe in those appointed times. Those are appointed times for me to get intimate with him. But they're not appointed times to... to it's, it's, for me, it's not like a, thou shalt. It's an invitation, right? And, and so we have this invitation that we can have with him. But we so many times make it into something else. Oh, I got sidetracked. So back to what we were doing in San Diego. And there was a, there was a, um, a couple there. I'll try not to. They, they might be here. I don't know if they're going to be here tomorrow or not. So I'll try not to be too descriptive. But the, this precious girl was from, I know, right? <laughs> you start catching yourself. Wait a minute. <laughs> and then everybody, else, oh, we heard all about you. <laughs> All right, so this precious couple, um, she had been raised in uh, a, a, well, not raised, she's actually raised in another religion, and she had, ha in another country, she had had a radical experience with the father, she, she, she found Yeshua, she ended up leading her family to Yeshua, and then they were, they were going to a Pentecostal church, and she was really excited and then religion set in and she got to this place she's like i can't go to church anymore i can't be a part of it anymore and she, it's just something inside her says i can't do it and so she was termed as rebellious and then so then she you know her and her husband meet and so they're and they're both have a relation don't get me wrong we like to term this people as rebellious but really, they just know that they're not meant to be in the cage. And when you give them a cage, they just know I was meant to fly. I can't get in that. I can't do that. That's not what I want. And so um, so I'm kind of giving her background. So anyway, uh, she then they had d tried a whole bunch of different stuff, different places to fellowship and churches and stuff like that. And they, and they found a lot of weird stuff. And she finally got to a place where she's like, I'm not going anywhere anymore. And she wouldn't go anywhere with her husband. And so then this, play, this meeting we were having was the first time in four years that she had gone anywhere that I understood, if I understood it right, the first time she'd gone to a meeting, uh, gone to a fellowship, because she just thought, man, there's nothing real in there out there anymore. And everybody just wants to put you in a box. And, um, and that, that day, and I, I didn't know, so I didn't know anything about that. That's what she told us afterward, okay? And so then that, that evening, the father spoke to me about, he just gave me a word. He just said, cageless birds. I just, about a cageless bird and talking about um, not, not conforming, not getting in that. And uh, I started talking about how those people are, and I didn't know anything about our, how they're deemed rebellious. And I was just saying, please don't get in the box. And we were just being really transparent. And this girl just starts breaking down and crying. And it was so amazing to see the Holy Spirit moving on her. And then she showed us this poem. And it was like everything that I was sharing that night. And so it was just awesome to see how the Father was renewing life in her. And what she needed to do, she needed to hear is, 
relationship with Yeshua doesn't equal getting in this cage. Right? It doesn't equal getting in this cage. Right? Hallelujah. <coughs> so tomorrow, <coughs> I've got more to share, but I want to tell you something. Tomorrow I'm going to go into more detail about this subject of what has my life. In the last, so I've been, so if you do the math, I got saved in 1987. And so that's over 30 years. And in the last two years, I found a freedom and a walk with Yeshua that I never, ever knew, not even in the beginning. Like I'm at this place right now where it's like, I don't even want to go back to my first love because I love him more now. I, you know, it's so... And what I want to do is I don't want to give you a doctrine. I want to give you Yeshua. I want you, I mean, and, and I can't give that, but he can. Remember I said who's here tonight? He's here to give you what you need. And if you can grab hold of this life that is available to you, what he has for every one of you, and I want, I want to let you know it's so much deeper than a lot of us that have been in church for decades ever thought and i'm sitting here in the last two years i i can tell you i i get up here and and i know what it is to get up in front of people and think i know how to preach and, and be loud or whatever but knowing that there's something that's just not quite right in my life and to have a, a, a wounded conscience and I want to tell you something, that there is this life in him that is, makes you totally free from sin, that can totally set you free, and yet you don't have to walk in bondage. Did you know that that's what the Bible teaches? But it's kind of funny, because that when we can actually take, and, I'll, and tomorrow I'm going to go into it deeper, but we can actually take something that we see over and over and over in the Word, and then when somebody says, hey, that's real, we're like, Oh, man, I don't know about this guy. Because we're so used to the box, the mindset, where we've been living for so long. I, let me tell you something, guys. I read, I kept reading. You know, I, I used to read, like, Galatians 5, 16. I used to, and that one's really been highlighted to me in my life as I've walked with him, which says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I'm like, that's amazing, right? That's amazing. And, and then we, I read in 1 John, he that abides in him sins not. It says that he came to destroy the works of the devil. And then we go into Romans 6, and he stocks, starts talking about, we're not in the flesh, what we're, what, but we're in the Spirit, and sin shall not have dominion over you. That sin won't have dominion over you, and it talks about this life. And for the longest time, we look at this, everybody, and we look at it as it, like it's this pie in the sky. It's this theology, you know, we, we look at it as if it's this thing that we know um, maybe very few ever get there, or, may, or even for a lot of people's theology, nobody ever gets there. You never really get free. You can never, as long as we're in this flesh, we're always going to be failing. We're always going to sin. We sin every day. And then we hear this from the pulpits. We hear this preached over and over again. And, and we really start to believe it when those phrases are nowhere in the Bible. They're nowhere in Scripture. But Scripture talks about this abundant life, this, this freedom that's found in Him. But our box, he doesn't fit in it. Remember what he said? I do not dwell in temples made by men's hands. I don't live in the structures that you sons of men make for me. I don't live in those things. He dwells in us. But where is the house, right? He dwells in us. He came to live in me. And so my testimony is I had this theory for 20-some years 
that I knew because I believed the word, right? And even, and I decided a long time ago that even if my experience does not line up with what the word says, I was not going to deny the word to make it line up with my experience. I decided I would deny my experience and believe the word of God. And so I always knew that that's the life, but nobody ever showed me. And when they tried to tell me how they, well, don't sin. Okay. How do I do that? Well, walk in the spirit. Okay. How do you walk in the spirit? Who knows how to walk in the Spirit? And, you know, we're never really taught what that means. And so it's this ethereal thing. It's this theory. It's this pie in the sky. It's not a reality, but the cross is a reality. The cross is a reality. Wait, we don't have to live broken. I don't have to live in my hurt. I don't have to live under what happened to me in my childhood because the cross happened, because Yeshua is alive, and he's not a theology. He's a reality, and he lives in me, and he wants to walk. Walk and live in you, and he can cause you to overcome, that you will overcome all the days of your life. I'm not waiting to sin anymore, and this isn't a theology anymore, and it's not a theory. I'm on the other side of theory. I'm in reality, and I, and I can't tell you, I, like Brother Pastor, Pastor um, Joshua said, I, that he said before, and it described how I feel. I, guess, I said, sometimes I just feel like I want to blow up. And he says, that's a joke I make. I'll just become a bunch of confetti. And I'm like, that's it. That's it. That's how I feel because the life of God that's Lord, and it's real. The gospel's real. The cross is real. He really does live in me. He really does break all the bondages of sin. And it's not how I was always told. It's not in religion. And it's not in the list. Let me tell you, man's always trying to tell you, this is how you are free. Well, don't sin anymore. No, that's not. We need to, we need to learn what walk in the Spirit. Okay, if you walk in the Spirit, and it says what? You might not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You shall not. I believe that. And, and now that, you know, and I believe it so much, it finally has become a reality as I've recognized that Yeshua is in me. And, and so tomorrow, oh boy, we're going to go into that. We're going to go into what it is, um, what it is like, and how that manifests out of your life. Because let me tell you something. Um, you know, in 1 Corinthians 6.17 says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Right? He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And the verse right above it, he says, you know, if you join yourself to a harlot, you're becoming one flesh with that harlot. And he uses that as a parallel. That he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And so he's telling us something here about how when you take a man and and we go back into the beginning, back to the garden. That's what I'm talking to you guys about is back in the garden where he took a a man and he took the rib out of his side and he made a woman. And then he said, this is now flesh of my flesh. This is bone of my bones. And he says, they twain shall be one flesh. And then we go into Ephesians chapter five. And he says that this thing that he created was the example of how you can know what your relationship with Yeshua is. Yeshua is. And Paul says it in Ephesians 5.32, I speak a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church, that you become one with him. That, so when, uh, if I'm one with him, and see, this is where our mindset gets us, gets us in a mess. I don't think I can do it. But Scripture says he's in you, Right? You can't overcome the world, but Scripture says He's in you. (laughs) And if He's in you, and He's in you not in a theology, but He's in you of a truth, then you're limitless. Does He, if I'm one spirit with Him, can, can I sin while I'm one spirit with Him? How can I sin? Seriously, how can I sin if I'm one spirit with Him? And so now we're getting somewhere. Now we're starting to understand that what, so what is the spirit? God is spirit, is he not? Right? So if God is spirit, and you know what happens when man and, and, and when Adam and Eve got together and they became one, they joined together in intimacy. 
They joined together in this close relationship. It wasn't duty. It was, I love you. I want you to be in my life, and I want to be in your life, and I want to be so connected to you in every way. And he made all things in nature to show the relationship of what he meant for us. And that's Yeshua in you. So I'm not going to hold you guys too long. I'm going to make sure we're not, I'm not going to just go on and on. Um, but I want to share a couple of things with you. Turn your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1. You guys, this is so exciting because for so long, uh, I'm a weak person. I was on a roller coaster. My life was roller coaster. In my life, I'm just testifying to you, my life's not a roller coaster. My, life, my life's not a roller coaster. Things that used to come back into my life like a cycle. Oh, I, you know, this, those besetting sins. Everybody's probably got a different one. And that you think, man, there's a besetting sin. And we're pretty much adults here. That, was it, that got in my life when I was 11 and 12 years old. As a young man, and this is the kind of thing that men struggle with, and and then we oh, it's pornography. Just to throw that out there, and that I I hated that thing. And even as I was walking with Yeshua, that thing would come back, come back, and it's an epidemic. And preachers are struggling with it everywhere. And there's something wrong because Scripture says that shouldn't be our life. It says that I I shouldn't be subject to that. And I thought that I could never, I remember just feeling like that thing could just be like a hook into you. And I felt like I'm kicking and screaming, trying to go the other way. And and oh, the guilt and oh, the shame and the wounded conscience that I would have after that. And when he revealed to me this walk, that dropped out of my life forever. You, You can check, you can check. You could check my phone. You could check the phone I used to have. You could check my laptop. There's never been anything. And, and if you only knew how strongly that can have a hold in someone's life. And I thought, man, it can never, I don't even know. It's just a theory, but I want to be free. And all of a sudden, him in me made me free. And it's a, revel- it's a revelation. It's not a new revelation. It's a realization because this is all over the word. And I'm going to go more into the word tomorrow. Okay? And we're going to talk more about it. Okay, so 2 Peter chapter 1, and it says in verse, let's go to verse uh, 3 here. According as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. There are so many promises. He's given you everything you get that? See, the word's real. So many times for us, it's a words on a page. It's something we wish we could live, but we didn't know it's really real. And then when it becomes reality in your life, you want to go out and you want to grab everybody and go, hey, this is real, real. This is real. You don't have to live in bondage. You can live victoriously. That all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue whereby are given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. We have, my beloved brothers and sisters, we have exceedingly great and precious promises, and we live like we don't. We live like we don't. And I'm going to tell you that Yeshua in you is a solution to all that you need. There's a scripture that says, it's Messiah in you, the hope of glory. This is a gospel. This is a gospel, and I wonder, like, I'm like, why did anybody teach me what it is to be in the Spirit? You know, I realize, you know what walking in the Spirit is? He's the river, and I can just be in Him. When I'm in Him, I don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And you know where that's found? It's found in intimacy. How did the man and woman, you know, how did the man and woman become one through intimacy and through intimacy with him he dwells in you he says i will be in you and even in the john 15 we're all very familiar with that i am the vine you are the branches 
if you abide in me and my words abide in you. And so let me ask you, where at, at what point does as that vine comes up and it grow, a branch grows out of it, is that branch a different wood than the vine? Where does the vine stop and the branch start? Can you show me? Or is it not the same wood? You seeing what I'm saying? And so if it's the same wood and if he's really in me, then I can bear much fruit. Hallelujah. This is exciting stuff. Wow. I had a dream about that. How did you know? Did you hear me talk about a gavel? Wow. That guy has a gavel. Well, it's, it's a sledgehammer, it looks like. All right, I'll share that in a second here. Now I have to, you know, <laughs> right? But here's something I want to show you. I saw this, and this really just, I want to do backflips. It says there's given us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. And I looked up, so I, I'm a language guy, and I, I read the Hebrew and the Aramaic, and I, do, I have a translating project. So I'm like, I want to see what that, if it really says what it sounds like it's saying. So I look up um, partakers, and that's a word that means to share together. And so that we are sharers, literally. And it's also used in translated fellowship. So the word for fellowship, when we're fellowshipping, we're partaking or sharing together, and we are sharing him. Right? We're partaking of him and we share together. And that word is even used when it says that um, of Joseph and Mary in the Aramaic, it says before they came together, before they shared together, literally in the Aramaic, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. So this is a really amazing word and it means share. And then I looked up the word divine nature and nature was nature and divine was of God. The nature of God and that I'm a sharer of the nature of God. I can share the nature of God. Wow. Everything that I need, I can share the nature of God. Boy, if we get this. Hallelujah. you got to come back tomorrow. I, I want to say we need to change how we deal with sin. We need to change how we, th how we define holiness, okay? Because for so many times, we're thinking, well, okay, I'm going to try really hard not to do that. I'm going to take the whole armor of God on. I'm going to get my shield and my sword, and I'm going to be all fully fit and ready to go to battle, and then I'm going to run out to battle and defeat the sin. And then what happens? You get knocked down. But what was that? The brother read something in Deuteronomy, I think, chapter 9. He says that when you go to battle, you're not going to have to do this. I'm going to go, and then what did it say? I'm going to be like a fire, and I'm going to consume your enemies. And then we don't realize that that's the secret to overcoming sin. That's the secret to having joy. That's the secret to not having the up and down, is I recognize that Yeshua lives in me. And when I recognize that Yeshua lives in me, he, I let him do it all. And so every t single time that I'm sitting here, if I'm sin conscious, if I'm thinking of, okay, I'm going to try really hard not to do that, I guarantee you I might resist it for a little while, but I'm going to fail. Because I'm trying to not do that thing. I'm trying to, or, or maybe it's, let's bear fruit. Let's do what we ought to do. We need to get a, you know, you guys, you're not tired enough. You need another missions program, or you need a, you know, an outreach program. You guys aren't doing enough. Let's get some more programs going, and let's wear you into the ground. And then we work really, really hard, very hard at doing what we're trying to do, and we find ourselves ineffective, and we're just like, I don't even know what good it is anyway, because I'm approaching it as a work, right? It says in Scripture, he that has entered into his rest has ceased from his own works. And so instead, I recognize that all of my um, fruitfulness is, relies upon my intimate connection with him. And so you want to know what my, and I'm not going to say my job is, but what I get to do is I get to connect with him. And as I spend time with him, 
and he spends time with me, I, I start bearing fruit. You know what? It, so we're sitting here going, oh, I'm, not, I'm trying not to sin. Or like a tree, okay, I'm going to bear some fruit. You ever seen a tree try to bear fruit? Mm, come on, get out there. They don't do that, right? That's, if, if, if it's trying to do that, when the fruit's not there, it's a sign that there's not life in it. There's not at least abundance of life in it. And so when every fruit is growing, fruit is the result of not just life in the tree, but fruit is the overabundance of life that the tree doesn't need to sustain itself. It is the abundance of what is inside of it that can't help but come out. And so as we start realizing I just need to spend time with him. I just need to walk with him. And what if I do that and, and I look at that as that I might know him and instead of all this effort, and I'm not saying we don't do the stuff, right? I'm saying there's a right way to do the stuff. There's a right way to bear fruit and it's not through effort, it's through intimacy, it's through becoming one with him. And then as you start becoming one with him, you're walking with him, you start realizing that, man, I'm not even thinking about that thing. And it just lost all its power just because of who he is in me. And not only that, but now I'm not doing something out of duty. I just, you know, I just got the love of God flowing in me and overabundance of the love of God. And it's really literally Yeshua in me. That is loving someone instead of thinking about this work I got to do so I can feel holy and righteous. All I'm doing is now because I'm one with him, I share his heart. And when I see somebody, I love them and I can't stand to see them being lost. And I've got to go pray for them. I can get out of my shell of being an introvert because I'm not bound by my limitations because I my limitations are his limitations and he has none. Right. And so I have no limitations. And so I've realized that this walk in him, there is no boundaries. I don't know if you guys can receive this or not, but I'm telling you that I've just realized that there's no boundaries to this life in him and that the, the order of the day is that people should be healed. And then not only that, but our, our efforts and everything we're trying to do just becomes life flowing out of you. You're not getting tired. You're not growing weary. You're going to run and not be weary. You're going to walk and not faint. And, you know, so many times we're thinking, well, man, I've been just pouring myself out, pouring myself out. I'm drained. But I realize that he is an everlasting fountain that never runs dry. And the other thing I realized is that when he pours out his spirit and he's using you and he's moving in you, what he does is he looks for a vessel that has certain requirements. Number one, its lid has to be off. It has to be open to receive, okay? You got to get the lid off, get the box broken. And then number two is you got to be empty and ready to be filled. And so you got to be ready to be filled. But I found out there's one more thing that has to happen. Because if Yeshua is in you and you share his heart, then you're not going to help but go out and reach those that are lost. And it's no longer a work. If it's a work, you need to stop and go right back to what you're supposed to, the beginning You're supposed to go right back to the beginning. Watchman E wrote a book called Sit, Walk, Stand that's based out of Ephesians and the way we're supposed to do things. You know, if if I'm getting tired and I'm getting weary and I can't do it anymore, even in my life today, I told you I've I've, I've been set so free that I didn't even, I, I knew as a theory it was possible. And I'm like, this thing's real, guys. This thing is real. You really can have victory. You really don't have to be bound. You really can start seeing your family saved and seeing marriage miracles happen it's a reality because it's him and he has no limit he has no limit and so the other part I, that i was going to say is when he sees that vessels so we got the lid off we got it's empty and ready to be filled and it has to be as he pours it in it has to disperse he doesn't put his spirit in containers that are just me, 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 trying to receive. 
But you know what? I want to tell you something I've learned because we could be really tired after a long week like this. And my wife, she was here tonight and she's like, oh, don't ask me to do anything. I'm so tired. I'm telling on you. But then as we started to worship, she just started bouncing and jumping. And, and I'm like, oh, here it comes. She is getting the, the spirit of God because I've realized that when we are, are clean and we're clean because Yeshua is in us and he completely cleanses the cup from the inside out and sin has no dominion over me, I am not bound, I am not a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner, but then I got saved by grace and then I got set free and in him I am righteousness and sanctification and redemption and holiness is manifested. Actually, every character of God is manifested in me and all my all the things that I could never do because if you only knew me, I, I don't have the ability to speak. I used to stutter and I couldn't talk and he, he used me and took out those weaknesses because there's no limitations in him. And that can look different in every one of us, right? Right? He'll do it different in every one of you. But what I'm saying is that he wants to live in you and flow in you in such a mighty way that we're, and we're not getting it. Because it's up here. So here's a dream I had. And then, I'll, and then I want to have a time of prayer. Okay? I had a dream before I came here this week. And I'm really excited, very excited about this one thing especially. Um, in my dream, there were all these little demons. They're, they're probably about that big. And they're wooden. They look like little wooden puppet dolls. But they're really wicked and they're actually like super powerful. And they're killing people. And I was afraid. And so I'm like running from these things and they're terrorists. And I hear people screaming. I'm thinking, man, they're killing those people. And so I'm running. And finally, I'm kind of cornered and a gavel appeared in my hand, a wooden gavel. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I can use that. So the demons started coming at me and I swung the gavel. And as I swung, it kind of stretched to the right length to make perfect contact on that demon. And I smashed one and I killed it. And I'm like, oh, that's good. And I smashed it like, I smashed it several times into the ground and the thing was dead. <laughs> and then the other demons started, I was whacking them with this wooden gavel. And so as they started coming at me, I'm sitting there and I'm swinging and I'm hitting them. And I realized I was knocking them down, but I must have used too much strength in the beginning because I was knocking them down. They'd knock out and they'd stop what they're doing. And then they'd get back up and they'd just go right back to everything they were doing. And I remember in my dream, I'm sitting there swinging and I'd hit one. And I'm thinking, if I could just hit it a little harder, like I hit that first one. And I woke up and the father is just said, saying, Sean, swing a little harder. I just want you to swing a little harder. You're, you're knocking them out. There's, there's something powerful going on here, but it's not quite enough. And then they're right back up to their doing. But there's this place that you can swing when you start, start totally devastating the kingdom of hell. Smashing them. Remember that place in Scripture where he says, smite with these arrows, and he smites three times? And he says, why did you only smite three times? You should have sm smote five or six times, and then you would have destroyed them. And so there's this place of... Um, of zeal, this place of being tired of what you always had, right? And where you're going to have to make a decision. But, and then I went back to sleep and I had one more dream. And so in my other dream, I dreamed I was preaching this message. I was preaching the message of Messiah in you and how that is everything that pertains to life, that all that you need in life is just your union with him. It's just union, and so I'm not, I'm not under the list. I keep the list just because that's natural, because fruit just can't help itself but flow out of me. And now it's not even an effort. It's effortless. It's absolutely, eff it's absolutely effortless. I, you, you guys are sitting here going, you're telling me that victory over sin is effortless. It is if you're in the Spirit. You actually can't do it. You can't do it. This is Bible. It's so funny because we've been hearing different theology for so long that when a man actually preaches Bible, you think, man, I don't know if this is heresy, <laughs> right? You know that you're stuck in a box when you start wondering that because, wow, well, that's not my experience. But I don't live according to my experience. I live according to the cross. I live according to the resurrection. I live according to what the Word says, and that says that He's alive in me. 
And I'm not just some preacher who's just wanting to go around and just because it's what I do. I'm excited and I don't care about anything. I'm just totally sold out, in love, on fire for him. Oh, but here's where that went, brother. And this, I'm really excited about this because I don't know what this is, means. But there is there was several people that were hearing this message as I was sharing it. And one of the guys, the people in the room that I shared it with, got it so deep. Like people were getting it, but there's this one guy that got it so deep. And he began to preach the same message I was preaching, but with a power and authority that I did not have. Like he went deeper, and as he sh- as he spoke it, people were falling to their knees. And even myself, when he was preaching that the life of Yeshua in us is all that we need, and that it's just about connection, I felt like I could hardly stand. And I was and I wasn't jealous. I was so excited. Like I'm so excited. Like, Man, somebody's going to get this, and they're going to become way deeper than I'm going in this, and this is going to go out to the world, and this is going to make a difference. And then the last scene in the dream, I saw how deep that other brother was going. And I'm like, he just showed me that I wasn't at the limits of this. There is no limits. I can go deeper. And the last thing is I started walking deeper. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Who is it? Is it you, brother? Is it you? Is it you, sister? Are you going to recognize that Yeshua, this is the true gospel? I shared this with a lady uh, a few weeks ago, and she's like, I just shared how we can have victory over sin. And she said, I think I just heard the gospel for the first time in my life, and she'd been in the church for decades. Because the gospel is that Yeshua was going to die on a cross, and he was going to rise from the dead, And he was going to live in you and that he was going to live his life in you and you're living resurrected life. And that's the gospel. And they says, you shall call his name Yeshua for he shall save his people from their sins. That means not just forgiveness of sins, not just the effects of sin, not just the punishment of sin, but from the smell of sin, from the garment of sin, from the action of sin, from every part of sin, because he's a deliverer. Hallelujah! And that's not bondage. That's not bondage. That's freedom because it doesn't come from the list. And so many of us, you know, we're like that rebellious person. Man, that person's rebellious. They don't do what we want them to do. We've, we've, we pl- piped to them and they didn't dance, right? We mourned and they wouldn't cry. And you're just, you're just sitting there going, I was made to fly. <laughs> and I know, I don't, I don't, I, I, I may not have it, but I see what you're doing, and I know that's not it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. I'm going to share one more thing, but I just want to stop and praise him right now and ask his presence to come. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would come. Yeshua, that you would do your ministry right now. Yeshua, I realize that you want to work, and I don't want to get in the way How insulting that would be if I thought that I could do anything. Because this whole message is about me not doing anything. This whole message is about you doing everything. That you're a real mighty warrior that lives inside of me. And inside of every single one of us. And that revelation will literally change everything in our entire life. And it will start to bring the world. It will start bringing the city. That thing we spoke over the city. Man, they're going to start seeing what's going on. And they're like, there's something different. I've been to a lot of boxes. But there's something different about what's going on. They're, they're out of the box. They're just totally in love with him. And, and he will begin to move and work in them. I got one more scripture for you. Hallelujah. And yeah, John, you can. And and John needs a microphone. Somebody could help him with that because this brother has got gifts. And I don't believe in uh, not letting the gifts flow forth. Hallelujah. Isaiah. I might hold you just a few more minutes. Is that okay, everybody? Is that all right? Okay. I've always loved this scripture. It's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31. 
And it's on a lot of people's walls, hanging up. We've got the theology, but do we have the reality? So many of us are tired because we were told that holiness is doing a list. You know what the word holiness means? It means to be set apart or dedicated. It doesn't mean doing a list. The men that were doing the list, they were, they were keeping the commandments, keeping the Sabbath, the feast, tzitzis, everything. And they hung his shoe on a cross and he said, you guys are full of dead men's bones. So the list wasn't holiness. You see that? But if holiness is to be dedicated, it can be nothing else but a state of the heart. You know, my best definition of holiness is in the Song of Solomon, chapter 7. It says, I am my beloved's, and he is mine. I am my beloved's, and he is mine. Because everybody always told me that holiness was this other stuff, and I'm just like, I don't even know if I want that. I don't even know if I want to be holy. (laughs) And then I realized that it was, I could be his and he can be mine and we can be in this love affair where I'm not bound to my limitations and I'm not broken anymore. I'm not broken anymore. I don't believe in confessing that stuff like he never did the mighty thing that he did. And I want to tell you something. If you're tired and you're weary because, you know, maybe we've been looking at it as a work and we haven't entered into our own rest, and then we can start sitting at his feet. You know what? You know what he's telling you to do? I'm not here to tell you you guys need to get out there and go pound the pavement. Hallelujah, right? <laughs> because, you know, when you don't have it in you and you, that's so scary. What? We're going to go out and feed homeless people and then I know I ought to do it, but it's not really in me. But when he's in you and you're so full, you're so in love, you're so in love, you're so full of life, you're so full of passion, and you can't help it. You're like, let's go. I can't stay home. It all of a sudden changed every single dynamic about your walk. And so I'm saying, hey, guys, you know what we need to do? We need to sit at his feet and do nothing but just be in his presence and love him and let that have its effect. Let that have its work. And watch how it will absolutely transform everything you do in life. And it will give you all that you ever wished you had. And you start, and this is a walk of faith, and you're going to get deeper and deeper. You're going to like, man, I'm not, I'm not human. He says, you know, in 1 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 3, you guys are walking as mere men. And that's funny because it means we're not supposed to just walk like just mere men. And I don't mean we're not human. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying we're not supposed to act like just mere men because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Isaiah 40, let's read that. Have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint, neither is he weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint, and to those that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord, wait on Yah, shall renew their strength. They will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary, and they will walk and not faint. And I want to be really brief here, because I know I need to be brief. I, I saw this thing about eagles because, you know, we, we always hear about renewing our strength. It's really amazing. An eagle, it goes through different molting periods, but there's a major molting period in its life where its feathers get really heavy and they get sticky and matted and it's really hard and even their wings stick to their chest. And their talons begin to get very, they're no longer sharp and they don't work and they get stiff and they don't grab as well anymore. And not only that, but its beak begins to get turned and warped and it's, and it's no longer sharp anymore. And they, this hits them about when they're around 40 years old. So when an eagle's around 40 years old, it gets this point where it's no longer, in, it's no longer a, hunt, a great hunter anymore. There comes a point when 
what that eagle has can no longer sustain its life. And that eagle will do one of two things when it hits that point, that molting period. It will either, one, it will die because its beak and its talons and its feathers can't sustain its life anymore. And I want to say this, is that a lot of us, when we let religion in, and we're sitting here going, I'm tired, I'm worn out, and my religion can't sustain this life in me anymore. I need something new. You hearing me? I need to be a new eagle. And so that the other option that that eagle has is to go through a very painful process. And that eagle literally goes up, lands on a rock, and it takes this beak that is all warped, maybe partly chipped and doesn't work anymore, and it, and it swings its head against a rock. It swings its head against a rock, and that beak, that old beak, strikes granite. And the crash and the, and the loudness of that. But it knows, it's desperate, it knows, I'm either going to die or I'm going to smash my beak. And so it smashes its beak with purpose and it breaks that beak off. And then a new beak grows. It's a five month process. That new beak grows and it takes that new beak and it plucks it plucks its feathers out. It seems like it's trying to kill itself. It's plucking its feathers out and new ones start to come into place and it plucks its talons and new talons grow in its place and when it makes that decision after five months it takes its first flight and it's like it was in the days of its youth it's a deadly killing machine it's able to fly like a young eagle again and it will live 30 more years or it dies when it's 40 hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Will you break your box? Will you break your beak with a very strong, I'm not doing this anymore, making a decision, I want to be a new eagle. My walk with God isn't going to sustain my life. I see it going down. But your other option is you go through this process of I give you my life. I'm just dying to myself. I'm, 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 I'm relating to his death, to the cross, so that I can have the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Yeshua. Come. Holy Spirit, come. I just want to, I just want to invite you to make that decision. If you're there, if you're tired, I'm not saying, oh, you're a, you're a sinner. Hey, if you're a sinner and you haven't asked Him in your life, please come. That's the first thing I want is to see you come. But maybe you're just needing more strength, or you're wanting to have His life in you, and you're like, I'm ready to start walking this out. I'm ready for a change, and it might mean you got to break your box that you put Him in. I've been, I've been following you after a list instead of out of relationship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My wife and I would love to pray for you. I know Joshua would love to pray for you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, Yeshua. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Take me.
As Sean was sharing, uh, I've experienced the same thing he's talking about. You know, when truth is spoken, it just, when real truth is spoken, it rings inside like, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. And I used to think that worship was just like uh, take a bunch of nice chords and a good melody and kind of sing it at God, and that's all I knew. But I so appreciate what he said tonight because uh, when you catch a glimpse of who he is, <laughs> I used to be really afraid to witness to people and like, what are they going to say or I'm not going to say the right words. And But do you know what? When you have that intimacy with Jesus, when you just get time with him and spend time with him. And then you can go out to people and you go, oh, if you knew the person I knew, if you know the person I know, you'd come run into him.
stay in his presence because I really, I really feel strongly that he's going to do a work in this body here. He's going to do a work in us. And maybe this is just like soaking in and I don't know if it's going to be, it can be right now. It's always now. And maybe it's tonight, maybe it's tomorrow, but he's going to break out in you. Something you're going to get this realization of who he is in you and you're going to start walking you're going to start flying like an eagle hallelujah hallelujah and and we're going to stop limiting him and saying i can't do it i i just stopped saying that stuff i can't do it because he can hallelujah just sing brother let's just worship him let's worship him hallelujah in that secret place as you're just uniting with him and you're just becoming one with him hallelujah just unite with him sit at his feet and love him become holy which just means you just are dedicated to him and then you find out he's dedicated to you and what a beautiful thing that is that's not hard at all it's just surrender it's just surrender it's just surrender i surrender can we all just tell him we surrender i surrender if you mean it just tell him you surrender you can have my life jesus you can have my life i give it all to you come come yeshua come lord i give it all to you i'm ready to take flight I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to live and I want to be renewed. I want my strength renewed. Yeah. Renew our strength like in the days of our youth, like our first love, like the first love and then beyond because that's just the start. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm never going to live and up and down life again and i know it hallelujah and my like my love is never gonna go out because he's able to keep me that's our promise that's our inheritance and i accept it i receive it i receive it yeshua i receive it lord jesus come i receive your life in me I receive what you have for me. I ask that you just come and live in me in the fullness of who you are. Let the light of your sun shine on my face, Father. Hallelujah. Let your love be shed abroad in my heart. And then just take that and send me out to the world after I've just been so full of your love. It's just natural. Hallelujah. I surrender. I surrender all you I give it all to you, all that I am, all that I have, I surrender all to you, hallelujah. Thank you. 
inside out Come and fill me from the inside out Come and fill me from the inside out It's no longer I who live It's no longer I I don't want to stop the flow of what the Holy Spirit is doing tonight. You know, he's moving here, and he wants your heart tonight. And, you know, I'm so excited when Sean was preaching this word because this is something the Lord spoke to me several months ago, and I preached about it. I told you guys, we believe salvation by grace until it comes to sanctification and then we think we can do it on our own and that's where we pick it up and we need to come to the place where we understand that we can't do nothing apart from him nothing That doesn't mean we scrap out the word. No, that establishes the word. That means that the God of the Bible, he's the one that I want to operate through us. Like Paul says, so that we would perform those works, those good works that have been foreordained for us to do. So in Jesus, we see the Torah the word, every, every single part is fulfilled in him and it's fulfilled in us by walking in relationship with him. So, you know, tonight, 
and I can speak to this, Sean can't, but I know many of us are being held in bondage because we're trying to do this on our own. And sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, Sean, we as preachers get so excited and we feel like Jeremiah, you know, we're speaking to, to you know, to just nobody. <laughs> but I know that you're here tonight because, because you want, you want God. I, that's the only reason why I'm here. And so let's get a hold of him. Let's get a hold of him. Let's be like Jacob. Father, no matter what it takes, we want your presence. We're going to wrestle you down for it. If it takes that. <laughs> I, I had a little lesson about it yesterday. <laughs> Those of you that were there know. <laughs> How many say amen to that? You know, we want to see revival. We want to see revival in our city. But guess who's dead? We're dead. And it begins with us. We want to see the moving of the Spirit. We must come alive in Him, guys. I mean, I don't want to preach to you. I preach to you all the time. So it's, it was Sean's turn. But I just hear the heartbeat of God as he was talking, just calling us, drawing us. So tonight, let's just draw closer to the Lord. And um, ushers, if you would put uh, two buckets up here, and you can put envelopes up here as well on, either, on both sides. We're not going to take an offering tonight just because we want to we let the Holy Spirit move. But if you would like to give tonight, you're not going to be here tomorrow and you want to sow into Sean and Raquel's ministry, you know, they're, they're, they need our support, and we want to honor them with an offering this weekend, a good offering. So if you want to give, uh, guys, if you could put te uh, text giving, you can text to any amount with the word other, and that way we'll know it's for them. If you want to give by cash or check, credit card, you can do it with the envelope. Just grab the envelope, and you can fill it out, and whenever you want, you can deposit it there. Don't go anywhere, David. I want you to stay here. Don't, don't go anywhere. Stay right there. Stay right here. Come. Come. Because I want to pray for you. Don't be stubborn. Come on. I want to pray for you. Because I see there's a big victory that the Lord wants to bring. And the enemy's fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. He wants to bring a big victory in your life. So, this time, you know, let, let's just open our hearts. If you need to get your offering ready, do it now. If you want to do it later, that's fine. It doesn't matter. But let's, let's just enter into some worship. And, and, Sean, if we could just pray for people. Let's just do that. If you want this victory, come on up to the front and let's begin praying. Let's, let's go after it. Let's believe God for what he wants to do in our lives, okay? So, come right now. Come with hunger. Come thirsty. Come ready to receive. And David, don't go anywhere. I want to pray for you. Catherine, if you would come up, I want, to, I want us to pray for you as well. Come on. 